Hello, welcome back to the Capstone Project. This is episode 4, and today we're going to be talking about GPUs, so let's get started. The GPU stands for the Graphics Processing Unit, and you may have also mistaken it for a graphics card. If you look inside a computer, then you're going to see probably this big box or rectangle looking thing. That's going to be your graphics card, and as a part of the graphics card, as a little square that looks very similar to a CPU, as we went over in the last video, that's going to be your GPU, or your graphics processing unit. So while I'm going to be talking a little bit about the GPU, I'm mostly going to focus around the graphics card. So sitting around the GPU in the graphics card is going to be the VRAM, or the Video Random Access Memory. We're going to get to random access memory in a later video, but the VRAM is very similar to it, except that um, it stores the memory and for all the tasks that involve uh, video processing. So as well as the VRAM, there's the VRM. The VRM stands for Voltage Regulator Module, and that regulates the amount of power or the voltage that's going into the GPU. Because you don't want too much voltage going in or else it's going to overheat, short circuit, whatever you want to call it. However, those are just a couple of small bits, and that's most of what's comprised for the graphics. Um, so what's the rest of it? Um, that's pretty much just cooling. Because something about the GPU and graphics card is that it produces a lot of heat. Now with CPUs, you need to put a fan over it because that produces heat. But the GPU requires a lot more cooling. So that's why... It looks really big because it can have one or multiple heat sinks on it um, it generally has a fan on it um, and it basically is just a big unit of cooling to house the GPU inside of it the difference between the GPU and CPU because as I said they're very similar is that the GPU is gonna have a lot more cores than the CPU and I didn't go over it last video but uh, CPU cores are um, pretty much just the interpreters f of the information you can think of them as scientists all right maybe there's a team of four or eight scientists in a CPU and so they're um, they're generally gonna be um, able to tackle more complex tasks than a GPU would, and a GPU would have hundreds, maybe thousands of cores. And you could think of them as, say, maybe assembly line workers. Not to say that assembly line workers um, are not as smart as scientists, but their job is more repetitive and doesn't involve quite as much thought. But if a GPU has more cores than a CPU, then why can't you just use a GPU instead of a CPU? Well, your CPU, as I mentioned in The Scientists, is able to handle a lot more complex tasks. See, their cores are more complex, uh, more intelligent, and able to do more difficult tasks than a GPU's thousands co of cores. So yeah, the more complex tasks that CPUs do with their small amount of cores are going to be something that you might find simple as like playing music or just being able to type documents or go on the web and look for stuff on the web whereas a GPU just deals with graphics and um, putting together the geometry of the graphics which um, if you think about it is a lot more um, simple and straightforward and repetitive than stuff that a CPU would be doing. I mean, your computer screen is basically just a ton of pixels, and so all your GPU really has to do is fill in the pixels, whereas a CPU has a lot more difficult tasks to complete. So anyways, your GPU's main function is to focus on um, interpreting the graphics and outputting it onto your computer screen. That's a really simple definition of it. So anyways, that's going to be it for the video. That was a really simple, um, really straightforward and short video explaining the GPU. So 
um, keep watching these series. The next video, I think I'm going to be talking about the Ram. Um, but either way, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, continue watching uh, more videos if you want to learn some more. So uh, thank you. Bye.